Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. I'm continuing my tour of the state of the various Linux mobile distributions and their desktop environments. And this time we took a look at Plasma Mobile, which is KDE Plasma's version for smartphones and touchscreens. So let's see how it advanced, how it works, right after this. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider, meaning they provide hosting that you can use to run your own servers, whatever you need one for. I use Linode to host my own Nextcloud instance, but thanks to their one-click apps, you can deploy any type of server in, well, in one click. If you're a gamer, you can easily start your own Valheim, Minecraft or CSGO server. But if you're looking for a VPN, you can also one-click deploy your own using WireGuard or OpenVPN, and you can ensure there is no middleman trying to intercept what you're connecting to. Linode is affordable and has consistent pricing with data centers all over the globe. You can upgrade your servers in one click, just as I did on my Nextcloud instance to add more storage, and you have real humans behind it all to talk to 24-7 by phone or support ticket, even if you use the cheapest plan available, which is $5 a month, by the way. They also have very detailed documentation if you don't like talking to other human beings, which I know I'm not a fan of. If you use the link in the description to sign up, you get a $100 credit to use on your own servers, so head over there and give it a go. I am certain you won't regret it. Plasma Mobile looks very similar to an Android experience. You've got your shortcuts with a favorites bar on the bottom, and swiping up opens the app drawer with all your installed applications. You can then long press these app icons to drag them to the main screen and move them around, creating your own shortcut page. Creating a shortcut doesn't remove the app from the drawer, just like on Android. The main difference seems that you can only get one page, and you can drag apps to the right to create another screen, so you can create multiple screens with various shortcuts for various tasks. It's just one main screen that you can put shortcuts on. If you've used Android in the past, it's going to be a super familiar experience, down to the fixed buttons at the bottom of the screen. The central one, with the Plasma logo, brings you back to your home screen hiding all open applications. The square on the left is the multitasking button, letting you see all your applications as small cards that you can select or close. Finally, the cross on the right is only active when you have an app opened. Tapping that will close the app completely so it won't be in the multitasking menu anymore. As usual on most phone operating systems, you also get a top bar with the cellular signal strength, the time and the various connections to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and the battery life. If you slide from the top to the bottom from this top bar, you get the usual quick toggles and the notifications, just like you'd get on any other mobile OS. From that view, you can also switch from a media player to the notifications if you have any controllable media playing. You can also long press on the home screen to change wallpapers. You get a short list of the ones that are installed and the familiar Get New button that works the same as on the regular desktop version of KDE Plasma. It opens a library of wallpapers that you can download in one click. Now it seemed to have issues applying automatically the wallpaper I just downloaded, but if I quit this little window and I went back to the home screen and selected it manually, it just applied perfectly. Now you can also add widgets to your home screen, although the selection is more limited than what you get on the desktop out of the box. Here again, you can download new ones and stick them where you want. Now all in all, it's a good experience. The controls stay on the bottom, which means that they are easy to reach with one hand and with your thumb, it's a good user experience, it looks all right, and the problem is, the PinePhone's hardware or the optimization of KDE Plasma is just not there yet. It's still jittery, it's still stuttery, it's not smooth, you can see that the animations just don't react as you swipe, the applications and everything takes a little bit longer than you'd expect to react. I'm pretty sure it would be zippier on more powerful hardware, or maybe just needs time to be more optimized. Now let's talk about the applications, because Plasma Mobile comes with a nice collection of apps pre-installed. Right off the bat, I was faced with one of my biggest annoyances with KDE and their applications, the unnecessarily complex naming convention. It seems like almost each app has to include a K somewhere, and the name almost never reflects what the app does. Just something that always bugged me about KDE applications, and it's no different here. I don't see how someone is to guess that Angelfish is a web browser, that Coco is an image viewer, or that Boho is a note-taking app. Now it's not like mobile Linux distributions will end up into regular users' hands anytime soon, but I think the naming convention is just not simple and pretty confusing. Apart from that, the app collection is pretty large and should fit most people's needs. 
You have your phone dialer, complete with call history and access to contacts, and an address book that plugs in nicely with the online account settings so you can import your contacts very easily. You have the usual calculator that goes into scientific mode if you rotate the phone, although this mode seems unusable as every button is way too tiny. The clocks app lets you set up timers, stopwatches, alarms, and add various clocks for various cities around the globe. The calendar looks pretty good with month, day, and week views, and an interface pretty well suited for touch, and the ability to add external calendars. You also get a beautiful weather app, a pretty nice looking audio player with some kind of chat head feature to access your now playing list. The web browser is called Angelfish, and it's alright if not the fastest thing I've ever used. It's got a default ad blocker, lets you change the search engine, and even add websites to your homepage. Unfortunately, it doesn't sync with the desktop browser, so favorites, logins, and passwords aren't kept in sync there, but it's a nice browser using Qt Web Engine. And then you get a host of utilities. A file manager called Index, which works fine once you understand how to select items and interact with them. A video player, a PDF and document viewer, which is Ocular, the same app you'll find on desktop KDE. You also get a voice recorder, a terminal, and multiple chat apps like NeoChat, which is a matrix client, Spacebar, the SMS client that I couldn't get to start a new conversation, and Telegram. You also have Coco, the image viewer, Megapixels, the camera app, Nota and Buho, two note-taking applications, and P-Sensor, a temperature monitor. Now, on this whole application collection, design seems pretty coherent. All controls tend to be on the bottom, which is, again, great for one-headed use, and they use a menu system with a hamburger menu in the bottom left corner. The general design of Plasma mobile apps is pretty good, and they all feel like they've had time invested to be as usable as possible. Some have genuinely great designs like the Clocks app, the web browser, or the weather app. And some are more confused like the media player, but as a whole they are all very usable and easy to understand. The minor annoyance I have is that the navigation header doesn't stay at the top of the screen, so when you scroll down to go back to the previous page, you have to scroll all the way to the top and tap the previous header title. That's not super intuitive, and I think making the header always visible on top of the screen would be a better choice. Now, of course, there is a way to get more applications onto the phone through Discover, KDE Plasma's app store. The app itself works really well on mobile with an adapted user interface. It lets you download updates to your applications and your whole system, and search for new applications or add-ons. Unfortunately, the same issue applies here as on Fosh, which is there is no way to know if an app will work well on smartphones or not. For example, since Plasma Mobile doesn't ship an email client by default, I installed Kmail, but at no point did the system warn me that it might not be usable at all on my phone, which it isn't. Now that's actually one of the main missing pieces for Plasma Mobile right now. There is no mobile-friendly email client. The app pages on Discover also lack some information. You don't get mobile screenshots, even from apps that support the mobile form factor, and you don't get any version history that I could find. Apart from that, Discover does the job nicely, but it should probably have some kind of filter to only show mobile optimized apps by default. But of course, you can also install desktop applications, and the reason is Plasma Mobile is supposed to turn into a desktop experience once you plug it in into an external monitor. So I tried it using an external USB-C to HDMI dock, but my ultra-wide display just wouldn't recognize the input from the Pine phone, so I couldn't see if it worked or not. But in theory, there is nothing preventing you from connecting your phone to an external display, using a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, and just use your phone as a regular desktop with desktop apps, in theory. Now, any tour of a KDE Plasma desktop wouldn't be complete without a tour of the settings. You get the aforementioned online accounts, letting you configure, for example, a Google or Nextcloud account easily, and the usual audio, Bluetooth, cellular, and hotspot settings. But you also get tons of personalization options, including the colors of the interface, the icons, and the Plasma style. You can get access to all the pre-installed defaults for KDE, of course, but there is also that nice Get New button, letting you browse for more themes, icon themes, and color sets which means that your phone will be just as configurable visually as your KDE Plasma desktop. I went with the dark theme because it looks pretty good, but there's nothing stopping you from mimicking your Plasma desktop if you'd prefer. You can also extensively configure the keyboard with the ability to enable vibration on key presses, changing the theme, selecting other languages, and some other nice features like auto capitalization, word suggestions, and spell check. Speaking of issues, there are a few. 
The lack of an email client is also a bummer, as that's one of the main features of a smartphone. The notification shade sometimes takes multiple swipes to come down, and the keyboard hides the main navigation buttons, and it can sometimes get stuck with no way of dismissing it, which can be a bit annoying to deal with. Now it's a more personal issue, but I also don't like the fact that each app icon is a completely different shape. They don't look like they're part of the same theme, they feel disjointed, and that makes the app list pretty weird to look at. But others might find having different shapes for each icon is better. Now to conclude on Plasma Mobile, I'd say it's on the same spot as Fosh is right now, which is to say, it's a really usable system. It's really nice and tailored for mobile, and the efforts are visible, the applications look good, they feel good, Although on Plasma Mobile's case, I wish they added a back button because that would be super useful. But the problem is, the PinePhone hardware or the optimization for it is just not there yet, and you feel it. The system is fighting you at every turn. It's stuttery, it's laggy, applications take a while to open and to close, things just don't react as you touch them. And we've become accustomed to smartphones that don't fight back, smartphones that feel smooth, that have 60 FPS animation, that are just reacting nicely to your touch and your input. And these lags and stutters are just not acceptable for daily use. Now, if you put Plasma Mobile on a flagship smartphone with a very good camera and you just add an email client, I could see myself using this daily because I don't need a lot of apps. And I think most people that don't need the full complete smartphone experience, but just need something to read their email, browse the web, access maps and GPS, they could do with that. They really could. And that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to see more videos like this one. If you want to watch somewhere else, you can watch on Odyssey. I left a link in the description below. If you really want to help support the channel, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!